Screens are omnipresent in today's digital world. They are essential components of smartphones, tablets, TV sets, laptops and wearable devices. Over the next few years, new technologies such as head-mounted displays for virtual or augmented reality, foldables, retinal projects, 3D holograms or direct projections, for example on car windows, might be adopted in different environments and use cases. The key question is not whether screens will change, but how radically. To answer this question, a large number of diverse trends involving a high level of uncertainty need to be taken into account. When clustering these drivers, two clusters have the highest impact and the greatest degree of uncertainty. One is the dominant driver of screen usage. Will media consumption be the main reason why consumers use screens? Or will functionality use cases prevail and become the key purpose of screen usage? The second cluster describes the proliferation of screens. Will screens be set up ubiquitously? Or will the proliferation be limited to specific areas, such as consumers' households? Based on our scenario thinking methodology, we have developed four extreme yet plausible scenarios. So, let's take a glimpse into the future. In our first scenario, screens are omnipresent and form the basis of a highly personalized Internet of Things world. They are interfaces to a connected environment that provides functionalities in all areas of life, with media consumption only one use case among many. Since production costs for basic visualization units are low, a multitude of screens is present in all sizes, form factors and resolutions and with a varying number of sensors. In addition to privately owned screens, numerous smart digital displays are set up in public spaces for applications like navigation, transportation, local public services and shopping. Messages on screens are personalized centrally, based on the all-encompassing ecosystems and operating systems owned by two to three digital platform providers. These DPCs gather and process enormous quantities of user-specific data and offer their targeted services seamlessly across devices. In this world, screens have become degraded to pure visualization units with few sensors and touch functionalities. Their brain power is centralized in the cloud and managed by DPCs. OEMs receive little benefit from the large number of screens, which are a commodity and bought solely as inexpensive hardware products, then programmed and adapted for the DPC's purposes. For developers of functionality apps, screens mean their services are available everywhere and at all times, making them essential for IoT-based services and connected business models. Media companies depend on cooperation models with DPCs to get their content distributed efficiently to screens. Digital platform companies are the winners in this scenario. Thanks to screens, they generate, process and monetize vast amounts of data and are enablers for an interconnected screen landscape. This is a world in which a single, personalized, high-end device per user replaces nearly all screens, both at home and outside, enabling a multitude of functionality-driven applications. Making use of new connectivity and sensor developments, this personal device helps consumers at each step of their everyday lives, in their cars, on buses and trains, in shops, while exercising, at filling stations and at work. Privately owned smart devices help consumers navigate their days and replace all other screens they previously encountered. The overall number of outdoor screens diminishes. Even in previously screen-filled cars, displays are now made redundant by consumers' personal devices. As functionality use cases are placed at the forefront, media consumption may remain relevant but has lower priority. Since they gather all user data, hardware manufacturers can provide an ultra-personalized experience while meeting strict data regulations. Advertisers are well advised to form collaborations with OEMs to bring personalized experiences and offerings to consumers. With an increasing need for connectivity, everywhere and at high speed, it is up to telecommunication providers to ensure adequate coverage. 
Hardware manufacturers with their proprietary operating systems are the key providers of go-to consumer devices and have become the keepers of consumer data and consumer contact. DPCs struggle having failed to build an open ecosystem that is independent from consumers' key devices. Augmented reality glasses are predestined to thrive in this world as they allow users to receive notifications or detailed information about their immediate environment on the go. Other consumers heavily rely on their high-end smartphones, using them as a central screen and universal remote control for IoT devices nearby. In this world, consumers retreat into their private spheres and seek distraction by consuming personalized premium content on very few high-end screens. Strict regulations and concerns about data management have massively shifted the use of screens towards media because functionality use cases cannot be performed efficiently. The number of screens is small in this scenario, but the hardware is of extremely high quality. Previously, consumers had been overwhelmed with a multitude of screens, leading to their widespread rejection. Super sophisticated personal devices have made most tablets and laptops obsolete and are used for all social media and e-commerce needs. A new generation of virtual reality glasses is ideal for this role, but has not completely replaced mobile touch displays. Big television sets with the highest resolution and color depth complete the small range of household screens. Hardware manufacturers are in a race for the best screen quality and resolution, pushing the technological development of displays to the limit. OEMs compete on differentiation. Users may only be willing to buy one device, but they are ready to spend a reasonable amount on it. Quality is the key to winning consumers' hearts. As the perfect complement to their high-end hardware, consumers reach for first-class media services. They choose content consciously and let vendors provide them with personalized premium offers. Targeting is decentralized as user behavior can be tracked precisely on the few devices in use. Consequently, targeted recommendations result from cooperation between hardware manufacturers and media providers. Media companies are in a favorable position because paid content is king. On the other hand, DPCs have lost ground massively in this decentral data world, where use cases based on functionality data are no longer feasible either. In our last scenario, screens are everywhere and tend to annoy consumers because the messages displayed are not targeted and often irrelevant. Data privacy concerns have caused governments to restrict the collection and exchange of personalized data, making targeting and functionality use cases impossible. The main purpose of screens is media consumption. Improved economies of scale have significantly lowered screen prices. This is why, in addition to the many private screens, city centers are also full of displays, some of them huge. Even shop windows and entire house facades are used as screens. These display semi-targeted news articles, entertainment content and advertising. Consumers are increasingly overwhelmed by this overdose of content in visual and acoustic form. Due to data privacy restrictions, digital platform companies have lost much of their competitive edge. Instead of individualized, data-driven targeting, neutral messages address micro-segments based on context and location. Media content has become an impersonal commodity that consumers are unwilling to pay for. Media companies must therefore rely on advertising revenues. With private and public spaces now covered in screens that show large amounts of only semi-targeted content, ad conversion rates are moderate. However, the advertising industry benefits considerably thanks to a great mass of ads on a great mass of screens. When it comes to hardware, it is quantity rather than the quality of individual high-end devices that is in demand. In this scenario, hardware manufacturers face a situation where screens are a commodity and therefore cheap. This scenario is a tough environment for all stakeholder groups. It is most likely to offer the advertising industry and hardware manufacturers the greatest potential, as both have successfully increased consumers' screen and advertising exposure.
each of these scenarios is different and has its own challenges. Are you excited about the possible prospects for the future of screens in 2030? Or do these future scenarios make you nervous? What will your future look like?